At the beginning of the movie, Hardin speculates that the world is a series of memories that she existed and he lost her. The guy realizes that his love story with Tessa seems rather banal, and she also met in the ancient Greeks, Shakespeare, Bronte. A good girl stands up for her independence, falls in love with a bad guy who hurts her, but finds the strength to forgive and reconcile. Hardin is awakened in the car by the noise of a train. The action unfolds a month after the events mentioned above in the first movie. The guy opens his phone and sees that Tessa has not read his messages asking to talk, although a month has already passed. Meanwhile, the heroine herself goes to a cab and hurriedly gets out of the car, running into the office. Noticing a guy in the elevator, Tessa asks him to wait for her, however, the door closes. In her heart, the heroine curses as the elevator doors open. Trevor asks what he was insulted for, even though he was trying to hold the elevator. Tessa lies that she didn't do it, which seems rather strange. In addition, the heroine reports that she is in a hurry to get to the interview, and therefore very nervous. Trevor jokes that she's already managed to make an impression. Tessa insults him again, but in a low voice. The heroine is happily welcomed at the publishing house, Vance, and wants to introduce her to the owner, Christian. However, the man is angrily talking to someone on the phone, so Kimberly escorts Tessa to the office. The woman apologizes for the mess and says that they get a lot of interns, but almost all of them have to be fired the next day. Kimberly has a good feeling about the heroine, however. Tessa learns that she has to read about five manuscripts a week and select good material from them. Left alone, the heroine begins to put her workplace in order and finishes in the evening. After that, Tessa gets to work and her night is very fruitful. In the morning, the heroine wakes up and sees Christian Vance across from her. The man is amazed that during the night, Tessa managed to read three manuscripts and left one of them. The heroine nervously explains that she enjoyed reading and worries that now she will be fired. Christian asks her to grab her things and follow him. Tessa walks down to the car with the man and decides to find out where they are going. Christian, sitting next to Kimberly, talks about a digital publishing conference where they can get some extra sponsorship. Trevor whisperingly advises the heroine not to wear the same thing for two days and recommends that she shower more often. Meanwhile, Hardin goes to the tattoo artist for a new drawing. The guy refuses a drink, saying he likes the pain. Christian and his companions make it to the hotel. Tessa learns that her room isn't ready yet, causing her to receive a complimentary suite from the hotel. Christian asks Kimberly to go shopping with the heroine to find a dress for the evening. A woman picks out an outfit for Tessa and decides to do her makeup in the room. Kimberly admits that she has more than just a working relationship with Christian. The woman worries that they forgot to buy lingerie and Tessa's things are in the laundry. However, the heroine says that this will not be a big problem. At the party, Trevor tells her that their company needs to get Jeong as a sponsor. Soon, a man approaches them with a huge bowl of cocktails and tells them that they should get drunk. While drunk Tessa is having fun on the dance floor, Hardin decides to attend a party to which Steph invites him. There to the guy immediately begins to pester a rather narcissistic and assertive Molly. On the dance floor, the heroine begins to embrace a strange guy. For a second, Tessa thinks that Hardin is in front of her, because of which she decides to kiss and then runs away. Hardin loses his temper when Molly keeps hinting to him about night games. Meanwhile, the heroine decides to call her guy to let him know that she looks amazing and he can't even see her. Hardin realizes that Tessa is drunk, especially when she yells that she's not wearing any underwear right now. The heroine hangs up the phone and faces Trevor. Tessa offers to go to her room and order ice cream and fries. After learning that the guy doesn't read fiction, the heroine calls him a savage. Tessa says that novels allow you to live many lives. Laughing, the heroine throws a napkin at the guy, causing his shirt to get dirty with wine. Trevor decides to change in the bathroom when a worried Hardin appears in the room. The guy is angry when he sees that Tessa has brought someone to the room. The girl suddenly pesters Hardin and says that either he leaves or they stay alone. The guy chooses the latter option. In the morning, Tessa learns that she urgently needs to go downstairs. The heroine informs Hardin that this night was a mistake and meant nothing. Also, Tessa accidentally lets slip about the kiss at the club. Hardin gets angry, saying that his Tessa would never do that. The heroine screams that there is no more of his Tessa. To hurt the heroine, Hardin yells that he was with Molly last night. In the lobby, Tessa talks to Trevor and learns that he knows her ex-boyfriend. Christian reports that Jung has agreed to sponsor them. Meanwhile, Hardin tries to talk to Landon and explain to him that he loves the girl and is angry that he lost her. 
In addition, the guy admits that he lied to Tessa about Molly. Landon informs the heroine about all this while she is at work. Trevor gives Tessa a present for Christmas and her birthday. It turns out that the heroine is spending a lot of money on cabs when it would be cheaper to find a used car. Trevor informs her that he found it and arranged everything with the dealers. Tess throws herself around the guy's neck and kisses him in gratitude. On her birthday, the heroine gives Landon a ride and learns that Harden flew to his mother in London. Tessa decides to use this to take things from their old apartment. On the bed, the heroine finds Harden's gift, an e-book where all her favorite works are loaded. Tessa cries, remembering how she and her boyfriend used to read together while they lived here. The heroine is packing her things when she hears the door open. Tessa hides and hears Harden suggesting someone take a bath. The heroine comes out of her hiding place and is surprised to notice the guy's mother. Trish immediately hugs Tessa and says she's even more beautiful than Harden described her. The woman apologizes and retreats to the bathroom for a few minutes. Harden apologizes for not telling his mother about breaking up with Tessa. The guy did not want to go to London without Tessa, and therefore Trish decided to come herself. The heroine thanks Harden for the gift and agrees to play along, pretending that they are together. Trish hears about Tessa's birthday and asks her to stay. Over dinner, the heroine talks about her work in Vance. Trish mentions that after her divorce, she lived at Christian's place with Harden for several years. The guy offers to lie on the floor so that Tessa is not nervous about his presence. However, the heroine decides to lie down together. After all, they are not quite Neanderthals. Before going to bed, Tessa tells the guy about her new car and work. Harden starts stroking the heroine, and it grows into something more. In the morning, Trish thanks Tessa for making the guy look happy with her. The heroine drives to her mother's house and runs into Noah, her ex-boyfriend. He mentions the situation with her father and realizes that he made an oversight. Tessa learns from Carol that she chased her father away when he was looking for her. The heroine gets angry when her mother criticizes her because of Harden and decides to leave. Tessa returns to her boyfriend's house in the evening. Harden has a nightmare about seeing his mother abused as a boy. In the morning, Trish reveals that she tried to help her son with the bad dreams, but failed. That's why Harden started drinking. And then the guy told that the nightmares went away after meeting with Tessa. Waking up, the guy decides to give the heroine another gift, a perfect day. Tessa wants to go ice skating, but Harden falls several times, and then admits that he got on the ice for the first time. The heroine suggests going to yoga, where she realizes she wants to go home and be alone with her boyfriend. The shower games are interrupted by a phone call. Kimberly really asks Tessa to babysit Christian's son while they both get busy. In the evening, the couple is left alone in the office. Harden gives the heroine a bracelet for the upcoming Christmas. In return, he asks Tessa to give him another chance. After that, the reunited couple remains alone. Trish receives a call from her ex-husband, Ken. The man asks her to join him and Karen at the mansion for a Christmas party. Trish agrees and takes her son and Tessa with her. After seeing family photos with Landon, Harden gets himself a bottle of wine and goes outside. Ken tells his ex-wife about his recent honeymoon. Harden gets angry at his father and picks a quarrel. The boy can't believe Ken feels guilty for leaving during a difficult time and attacks the man. Trish is angry at her son and asks to finally forgive Ken. Otherwise, he will drag himself to the bottom, so also spoil Tessa's life. The heroine walks Harden home, but does not talk to him. On Christmas Day, Tessa comes to work and encounters Trevor there. The heroine talks about her situation with Harden. Tessa loves the guy, but realizes that he still has a lot of problems to solve. Trevor sympathizes with the heroine and tells her that he will soon move to Seattle since Christian decided to promote him. Soon, Harden reconciles with his father and returns to his normal state. When Steph invites him to a party, Tessa offers to go there together. In addition, the heroine learns that Christian wants her and Harden to go to Seattle for work. At the party, Harden leaves Tessa and goes upstairs with a girl named Jamie. The heroine decides to play truth or action with Molly, which ends in a scuffle. Harden takes the girl upstairs where they are left alone. Tessa goes to the bathroom and the guy sees messages from Trevor on her phone, looking forward to spending time in Seattle. Tessa sees Harden chatting with Jamie about a shared secret and has an argument with him. Tessa screams that she can never trust a guy after what happened. In the morning, the heroine realizes that she was guilty and tries to talk to Harden. However, his phone goes dead and Jamie offers to charge it in her car. When the guy calls back, Tessa tries to reach for the phone and gets into an accident. Harden sees this and rushes over to her. Landon fights with the guy, believing that he is to blame for what happened. 
Trevor asks Harden to let the heroin go. A guy flies to London and smashes his phone. Harden decides to stop drinking, and Trish asks him to finally forgive his father. In addition, the woman wants Guy to fly to Vance's party where Tessa will be. At it, Kimberly finally gets a proposal from Christian. Harden reconciles with Tessa and gets a tattoo in her honor. At this point, the movie ends. If you want to see the third movie in this story, I expect 100 likes under the video. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. Give this video a like. Write in the comments what you think about this movie and see you in new videos.